Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish, and welcome back to the Last Alliance Total War, the Lord of the Rings mod set in the Second Age for Shogun 2 Total War. Today, because you guys smashed the like target on the previous video, we're going to be diving in with a brand new campaign. Now, this will be very much like the previous campaigns I've done recently. We're going to have a like target every single episode, and if we hit that, then I'll continue on with the campaign. It's basically so that I can gauge your interest and ensure that you guys are still wanting to see this content. Content. And we pretty much always hit. I think we've only not hit a target once and then we hit it the next episode on my previous campaign So yeah, it's a great way to let me know that you guys are engaged on the series and that you know You want to see more on the channel because there's no point in me making this content if you guys don't want to see it So yes, if you want to see more of this campaign drop a like down below if we hit 500 likes I will do another episode in this campaign and if we don't then hey we're just you know It's just you guys telling me that you want to see something new and different But I'm sure we will because a lot of you guys are very excited for this campaign um, and also I'll make a deal with you guys as well if we hit a thousand likes on this video I will upload another episode tomorrow so you know make sure you hit that like button if you want to see another episode tomorrow if not and we just hit 500 then that's absolutely fine I'll do one on Monday or something but yeah if you want to see another episode pretty soon then smash that like button but yeah so if you guys don't know this mod if you haven't seen my previous videos on this mod at all this is the last alliance it is set in the second Second Age, uh, basically, you know, where, you know, the elves and men have come together to defeat Sauron, you know, you basically at the beginning of the Fellowship, uh, that is the Second Age, and that's what this mod is going to be based on. However, whilst that mod is being developed, they've gone ahead and put out this really kind of cool mini campaign, which focuses solely on Numenor. I think it's a couple hundred years before the events of the Last Alliance, where there's a little bit of a succession crisis. The last legal king of Numenor has died. His daughter should take over. However, she gets forced to marry as her cousin comes back. Uh, I think it's uh, this guy comes back from Middle-earth with an army and stuff and basically forces his daughter, uh, the legal, the rightful heir to marry off somewhere else and kind of he gets the nobles on side and he takes control until the fall of Numenor and when Numenor sinks. Um, however, in this mod it allows you to play as a bunch of different characters and basically change the course of history. In the history of Middle-earth, nothing happened. He came back, he forced her to marry, and he went on with his, his days until, until the very end. However, we can actually change that. We can play as Tar Morel, the rightful leader of Numenor, and we can go ahead and bring glory to this great kingdom. You can also obviously play as the uh, as the guy who comes back from Middle-earth, and you can play as all the other nobles as well. You know, you can pick a side, you can try and conquer Numenor for yourself whilst all this stuff is going on. So it's pretty exciting. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to play as Tar Morel. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, Morelli, Morel, it's something along them lines. Just let me know in the comments how much I'm butchering it, and I'll try and make it better for next episode. Um, but yeah, so basically we're going to play as her, and we're going to try our best to... Uh, defeat this threat, put myself on the throne like I should be because, you know, she is the legal heir, um, or the rightful heir, I should say, and there's going to be, you know, lots of battles, lots of interesting stuff, but it should be a very, very good campaign. I think we're just going to play on hard. I know, you know, I don't know what the mod has really been balanced. This is still a very much a work in progress mod, so, you know, this is an early build of this prologue campaign that you guys um, are going to be seeing. This shouldn't take, you know, this won't be forever until you guys get your hands on this and so make sure you're subscribed to the channel I will let you guys know as soon as this mod does go public because the prologue campaign is going to come out way before the main campaign does uh, for the last alliance which will have elves dwarfs uh, you know humans orcs everything in um, you know this is kind of just to let people play it get used to the mod get hyped for the mod whilst the main campaign is being worked on uh, because obviously this is much easier to do. This is like one culture. This is, uh, you know, this is a lot more simple than say the whole of Middle Earth that has so many different armies, cultures and stuff. Uh, but don't get me wrong, there are still a lot of different uh, units in this mod as well. I think every single noble, every single faction has a few specific units that they can pick from, uh, which is really, really cool. Um, so yeah, as I, as I was just saying before I went off on a tangent, make sure you're subscribed to the channel um, and I'll let you guys know as soon as you guys can get your hands on. But I 
can't imagine it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be forever, you know? It's not like a, oh, I can't wait for my grandkids to play Bannerlords type of thing. I think, you know, you guys will be seeing the, uh, you know, this, this mod coming up, you know, fairly soon. Um, also as well, sorry, I know this has been a really long intro, but I want to try and get all of this out there for you guys. Make sure you check out the links in the description. I will link the Discord for this mod down below in the description. As well as the Patreon for the main modder. I think for I think there's only one tier on the Patreon. It's like a dollar, and you get access to loads of behind the scenes. Uh, they constantly update the uh, Patreon with pictures, development blogs, and stuff like that. So for a dollar, it's really really worth supporting because um, you get so much information about the mod for only a dollar. Like it's actually a really really good deal. Um, so yeah, make sure you check that out. Go and show your support. And even if you just jump on the Discord, say you're looking forward to the mod, um, is is kind of one of the best ways to to keep modders motivated I find um, but yeah so we are on Numenor this is Numenor obviously uh, many of you guys might not know about Numenor because you know you've kind of just read the books and uh, or read the trilogy or maybe you've uh, just watched the movies or something but Numenor was here in the second age it eventually gets sunk um, but I think it's called the great disaster uh, Sauron does some tricksy stuff uh, uh, in the island as he infiltrates it. I think gets taken prisoner and then escape or gets set free and then yeah the the great disaster happens on Numenor and it gets sunk one of the cool things as well about this mod before we do dive into it is that if we take a look oh, oh what's this oh hello Hello, Middle-earth. We've got the rest of Middle-earth kind of mapped out. Now, I don't think anything is, like, placed down. There's going to be a lot more detail added to the map. I think it's just kind of flat at the moment. But as you can see, there is a very nice outline of Middle-earth right here, which is awesome to see. Like, I love Shogun 2 is the last game that allows you to actually map out and change the campaign map. And it just has so much more ability. So, yeah, this is epic. You can obviously see this is, like, Minas, this is Gondor, Minas Tirith around here. Uh, I think this is Arzilioth going to be right there. You've got Kaandros and Minas Tirith will be, like, around here. Uh, Rohan, obviously the elves up here. The Misty Mountains will be, like, well, like, here. There's some really cool stuff, so I just thought I'd show that because it's really awesome to see, you know, all of that getting mapped out, and that's going to be the main battle theater when we do get over there. But for now, we do obviously have, uh, we're going to be focused on Numenor. So, set up for our cities. We have three cities. These are going to be kind of like the capital. I would assume this is our capital, uh, the main city, which is very cool. And again, it looks so goddamn good. Um, you know, Shogun 2 is an old game, but it looks great. I do have like an overlay mod. And man, that makes such a difference. That's just called Reshade. Um, you can download it. It's free and it's very simple to download um, if anyone's interested. But yeah, so we have an army. So we're at war with this guy. This is obviously our cousin. He has a full stack, which is pretty scary. And I believe these guys are really good as well. Deadly units that can quite easily come in and cause a lot of issues. So I think first things first, we want to obviously get this army up and running as quickly as possible. Uh, we actually have... Oh, that's awesome that you actually have her as a commander as well. That's so cool. I wonder if she has a custom model on the battlefield or not. Because obviously you can see he has a custom model. Um, and his units are going to look different as well. Even though we use the same sort of class. Like we use uh, Numenorean culinary swordsmen and stuff like that. They're going to have different coats of arms on. Different paints. Different colours. To make them feel more unique. Um, and I think that's very needed as well in this type of mob. Because... Uh, when you are just focused on one culture, you need to have these different, uh, differentiations, oh my god, I can't speak, um, to the units so they actually do look different. <coughs> Free kingdoms. Um, so yeah, they actually do look kind of different and each, I think each faction has a couple unique units as well, which is very nice indeed. Um, so what do we want to do? Probably get some infantry up here. Just some Numenorean swordsmen probably would be good. Some spearmen would be pretty nice as well. We are making some decent money and we have a decent amount of money stockpiled. So this is you know, go ahead and recruit um, some more troops and again a lot of these prices and stuff will be balanced at the moment they're 420 blaze it um, but yeah I think at the moment the model oh wow you can recruit everything wow I think that obviously also probably is going to get looked at as well at some point the amount you can recruit as well uh, but again this is I guess the, the main capital of Numenor so it might make sense and maybe a few of these other buildings do help out so as you can see like a few buildings do have these white uh, blotches on at the moment uh, and they will obviously be changed I also really hope as well that they get rid of all these additional buildings uh, it'd be I think it's very like it'd be very nice just to have the upgrade because you know at this point I don't want to change over but maybe, maybe that is a good thing. 
so you don't have to destroy it. I don't know. I think I'd prefer, personally, to have it so that I wouldn't have all these other buildings up here. Like, it's just, I've got a fortified barracks here, and if I wanted to upgrade it, I just, obviously, you know, you can just upgrade it to whatever building is the next one. Because, realistically, I have no idea what the next building in the train is. I assume it's a garrison. But I could be wrong, right? You know, I don't know what actually is the next upgrade, because it's not, obviously not a council chamber. Or maybe it is a council chamber. I don't know how that works. Yeah, because obviously the upgrade here, the, uh, the exotic market, isn't the fort. So, yeah, I think it'd be very nice just to have the, the upgrade to the building uh, on it personally. But that's just my opinion, obviously. So, we have some extra buildings. We're recruiting a nice little army there. I guess we'll recruit some more men elsewhere as well. That's probably what we'll spend a decent amount of our money on. Just some volunteer spearmen there. Okay, so yeah, the, the building cap is there. I guess it's just because this is our capital. We can spam out an army very, very quickly. Um, so what do we have here? So we have a Master Blacksmith of Mithril, which is huge. That gives you so much stuff. So I'm a big fan of that. Uh, we have an Exotic Market as well. Yeah, because it's, kind of, it's like kind of hard to tell you know, what is an upgrade and what's uh, what's not. Is like a jeweler going to be an upgrade or is that going to be... Yeah, it's quite kind of difficult. Um, but what else do we want? A gold work wouldn't be bad, honestly. Uh, a, a tap room. So I get like a pub going. Also would be pretty decent. Because obviously this is going to be our capital. So we want to make this as strong as possible. Um, yeah, let's get some civil bureaucracy in here then. Yeah, we've got fortified barracks, master blacksmith and the thing. Yeah, so let's get some civil bureaucracy in here. It gives us a little bit of happiness in the region and reduces the administration cost. That's good. Uh, and then maybe a stable so we can get some cavalry going on. Uh, we have some upgrades. So we have the deep mithril mine in our capital as well, which is huge. We also have an artisan town. We could change it over to a inn, or we can make it into a workshop and upgrade that. I think for now we're fine. This is also one of the things I love about Shogun 2 as well, is that you actually have roads and farms separate to your main building chain. So you actually have like towns outside the cities you upgrade, but it's within each city. I think that's just really, really cool. Over in other town, we do have a goldsmith and a market. So let's go ahead and pick up a fort uh, or a watchtower. It does consume a bit of food. We don't really have a lot of food. But I think that's going to be worth it. Yeah, let's upgrade. Just get a watchtower. Give a bit more of a garrison too. Because these are our core cities and we don't want to lose them. Out here, I th yeah, we'll try and recruit. I don't think we're going to be able to. I feel like this army is going to come straight in. Because we do, if we go to diplomacy, we start off at war with, uh, yeah, with my cousin. He obviously has a full stack. It's going to be pretty deadly. We start off friendly uh, with everyone else and trading. However, after our first turn, that will completely change and we will be at war with certain people. Uh, we're well, not at war, but we'll break. You know, the nobles will basically start to uh, choose who they're backing and stuff. So I guess it is probably kind of important to maybe, uh, if I can, be a bit more friendly. So we've got this guy who likes us. I guess being friends with this guy would be pretty good as well because he's obviously so close to us. Uh, is there anything we can do? Welcome. Maybe I'm offer him military to access. To, uh, to yeah, he'd be happy with that. Outcome. We'll give him military access as well. Uh, that's really cool as well. I like how this is. I'm Obviously, the voice this. acting and stuff is going to be changed. They're going to have, you know, different voices. They should honestly... Like, I say this for every mod, but they should just hit up officially Devon, the YouTuber, because he does such a good job with voice acting. Uh, Taxes-wise, we're fine. Public order, so we're probably just good to end the turn, I think. Uh, we'll probably end up diving into a battle very soon. Oh, they're going for the capital? Madmen! Absolute madmen. Well, we're diving in for this battle. This is, I mean, I guess it makes sense, right? He's come to claim his throne of Numenor, and he's going in. Also, one of the sickest, I mean, like, Shogun 2 is just such a good game. Like, when this mod comes out, we can do drop-in battles. And imagine when we have the entire campaign. I can do streams where I play as Gondor, or Arnor, or whatever, the elves, the dwarfs. And at the entire campaign, we do drop-in battles where you guys play as the AI. Like, how amazing is that? Every battle, you guys take over. So we're not playing against a shitty AI. We're playing against actual people. Like, that's so cool. That is really, really cool, you know? And obviously you have multiplayer campaigns in Shogun 2 as well, so you can do a head-to-head -head in this mod. Me and Apollo can take up with the, the actual campaign and stuff. Like, there's just so many possibilities and cool things. So, something I need to mention before we do dive into it. There are no custom settlements at the moment. The main focus of this part of the mod is to simply get, like, buildings or the units in, uh, balance around that, kind of get custom scripts working, because I believe... There is also at the moment 
only uh, only vanilla Shogun 2 scripts, but they're obviously being changed as we speak. Um, so at the oh, go go away, advisor. I'm a pro. I don't need your help. So obviously um, at the oh my god, it is so misty. But I guess that's cool. Um, yeah. So at the moment there are no custom settlements, but there are going to be. So don't worry about that. It's just custom settlements do take a long time to make and develop and stuff. And obviously you have to have the architecture for every single faction. So just bear that in mind that, you know, units um, and the castles and stuff will probably be like this for a little while. However, if you can model or you, if you can 3D model or you can make maps in Shogun 2 or whatever, make sure to go over to the Discord. They are looking for more members to help them out. So if you can offer anything to this mod, uh, whether it is 3D modeling, 2DR, um, scripting, uh, you know, map making, anything like that, make sure you go over and hit them up and, uh, yeah, see what you, if you can offer anything to their, their, to them. So, I guess we have a pretty nice army. I mean, this is like our garrison, right? So, we, we should be pretty, uh, pretty decent. Yeah, I mean, look how nice these Numenorians look, man. That is just so goddamn clean. Such a cool looking unit right there. So these are going to be the bowmen. These are going to be the uh, the armored infantry right here. Or the uh, shielded infantry. Uh, so then if we take a look at the, the Numenorean guard right here. So these guys are looking amazing. And it's even epic, more epic when they form a, a shield wall as well. We'll do that in battle. And again, it looks so much nicer. With my reshade on, really, really nice. Uh, got some more of them back there. Then we just have the the normal Numenorians, uh, so a little bit more less lightly armored, or a little bit more lightly armored. We then have the elite guard. So this is the unique unit for this infantry. A nice little mix as well. So I love the uh, the chainmail as well underneath the uh, the main armor as well. It looks great. We have our main general. Does she have a custom? So she has a custom unit as well. That's awesome. And yeah, you actually can see her as well. I mean, well, I think the 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 Numenorean army is split between men and female um, because there's no like real records about the Numenorean forces. So the model was just like, yeah, sure, we'll have a bit of everything. And obviously, you know, she is leading them. And I lo look at that helmet, man. That is just so nice. Really, really good 3D modeling. Um, and yeah, she has a cool like hybrid unit. Um, right there with nice shields and then I think that's everything. Let me just have our swordsman uh, Which we can stick there. Then we just have our swordsman right here. So yeah, a really really cool setup Okay, so let's let's dive into the battle I'm gonna form up my forces and then start the battle. Okay, so I've set up my forces We're gonna prepare for their assault and obviously uh, the AI in Shogun 2 is very aggressive when it comes to sieges I mean sieges in Shogun 2 are deadly. Uh, they really are very hard to take so, Oh, don't mean to do that. I thought insert was to go in on this unit, but I guess not. Um, yeah yeah, sieges are very, very difficult in Shogun 2. Uh, they take a tremendous amount of forces. And I like that about the game because it means that they're actually difficult to try and secure cities. You know, you actually have to think about it. You have to come in with a lot of soldiers. And I mean, just look at that right there. Holy crap, that looks so good. Even with the city in the distance as well. Oh, man. That looks amazing. So you can see the different look of these units. So even though they're kind of similar culture, these have much more of like a Middle Earth Harad feel. Not Harad. Um, Umber feel to them uh, than anything else. They're kind of a lot more because he came back from Middle Earth. He has a whole different set of units and stuff. And they look amazing. They really do. I really like the big shields and stuff. So a very cool unit over there. Um, then, oh, oh, fuck, the main assault's actually already occurring. Okay, 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 that's fine. We can take a look at some more units. Then we just kind of have, you know, more similar units that we have. The general unit, though, is custom. Yeah, so the general unit right here is a complete custom model. I'll actually, just pause it so we can take a look at it. This is, like, another unique unit for this faction. Um, they're, like, a pike unit. Again, looking very cool. Um, but, yeah, cool. I guess we'll start this battle, um, off like this and i guess we'll start and bring over some archers as well because i have a fair amount of units that aren't even over here right uh, we'll form some shield walls with our infantry you can obviously see as well that we have the shogun 2 oh sorry the attila ui as well which i think does a great job at modernizing the game it makes it feel a lot more unique and stuff um and something to note oh yeah we'll bring these guys over as well something to note as well is that uh, the arrows are a little bit messed up um I don't know if that's me or if that's the arrows. Either way, we're getting peppered by Archer Fire and actually doing a lot of damage to us. We should probably try and pull back. Yeah, let's try and pull back a little bit really quickly. But yeah, something def like very, very important to note uh, is that the uh, there are no shield animations in Shogun 2. There are no shields in Shogun 2. 
So the modders have had to go ahead and basically create shield animations from scratch to add into the game. Uh, so you're going to see a bunch of cool custom animations and everything, which is definitely worth checking out. Yeah, this must be some sort of bug or something right now. Unless it's something I can do in the options, maybe turning off arrow trails might help. Um, turn that off as well really quickly. Uh, battle interface maybe, part markers. Uh, maybe graphics we can take a look at. Is there like an arrow trail anywhere I can turn off because maybe that's like affecting it? Doesn't look like it, but that should be fine. I guess we'll just roll with it. It's probably just because it's snowy as well. There's like a little bit more stuff. I don't think there's anything else I can uh, yeah mess around with. So that's fine. We'll just we'll just roll with it for now and obviously part up with it. Um, we're actually taking a lot of missile fire right now. Our archers are rushing over quickly. They might not get her in time. I might actually move these guys back already. Like, to be in a layer. Yeah, I'm actually going to have to do that. Let's get these guys back now. We have these archers, obviously, our general units. And, I mean, archer fire in Shogun 2 does look amazing. It's definitely the best looking archer fire in this entire game. Like, in this entire uh, series, I should say. It just looks amazing. Like, imagine the elves. Like, imagine the elves just pew pewing away. Oh, it's going to be so good. Uh, and they are starting to come over the walls now. Um, so, we're going to start to see some combat going in. Obviously, as I said, these are all custom animations. With the swords and shields. Um, so, units are going to be fighting. And it's going to be, yeah, pretty intense right now. A lot of arrow fire coming in. We will move in there. Probably going to have to advance infantry pretty quickly as well. I'll let these guys continue to shoot for as long as possible. But yeah, fighting has now occurred. Uh, dudes are coming around. Oh yeah, we also have to worry about this as well. I mean, we do have a unit of archers there shooting down on these guys, so they have a pretty good little view down there of them. But it's probably good to get some swordsmen over here. And again, probably bring back these archers. And we can start to bring over more of our infantry that we have deployed here. We'll start getting these guys over here. Um, and I guess you guys try and push your way through there as well. Oh, one of my archers has actually been caught here. That's fine. We'll find some of our archers now as well. We're going to block in here with a unit of our spearmen. That's good. Continue to fight them um, and keep them at bay. And yeah, we said I've got some good infantry here, and we can reinforce here as well with some of our other infantry right there. Oh wow, the general's going up as well. And this is one of the things like I'm saying, like the AI isn't smart in this game. You know, they're throwing their general forward, they're showing, they're throwing their archers forward and stuff. Um, you know, and that kind of sucks. But with multiplayer campaigns and with drop-in battles, you can basically like nullify that, which is just yeah, so epic. It really is. Um, and again, there's very little the mods can do about that, you know. The mods are basically just kind of stuck with, like, what they can do. Well, I think our general's out of ammunition or not. No, he's still shooting. That's good. Basically, just want to shoot as much into that as possible. We have a rally. I don't know if the rally is going to be in range of this unit. Because we've been war cried as well, uh, which isn't great. Reinforcements have arrived, though. So let's get some more men in here. We'll get some more archers. Basically, I want to stop them from being able to climb up here and hit my archers. We'll get some more MG here. We can probably form shield wall with them. Get some archers spread out there. Get some archers spread out here. Winning this is pretty important for me as well. So I desperately want to win that. We have a unit of archers here as well. Uh, get up there, boys. Get up here and shoot down on them. Yeah, because all our archers are covering fire right now. And just imagine how epic this mod is going to... I mean, that looks fucking amazing, right? But just imagine how awesome it's going to be when we do have Gondorian or Arnorian settlements and you have... You know, fortresses like Helm's Deep, Minas Tirith, like... It's going to be insane, like, all the Elven strongholds as well, fighting over this. Oh, it's going to be just, like... This mod has so much potential. Um, it's making amazing progress. Um, so, yeah, make sure you support this mod, you know, because... Obviously, the people working on this are doing this completely for free. You know, they're just creating some fun stuff because they love Shogun 2 and they love Lord of the Rings. Like, you know, this mod deserves a lot of love and support because... Yeah, it, desperate, it easily can be one of the greatest mods of all time, it, like the Total War. You know, it has so much potential with the custom maps, with the, the units, the animations, trolls, Moomakill. Like, there's just so much I can do. Balrogs, even though Balrogs are mainly first age, but even still, you know. And Shogun 2 is just such a great game, but it deserves it. Okay, well, we can go ahead and flank these guys. And also, as well as that, the battles last a decent amount of time as well. Shogun 2 in general uh, is a very, very quick battle system. They've done a really good job in this mod of prolonging battles, making them actually last a decent amount of time. 
Oh, and this is interesting. Some of our units have... Uh, so, so our elite units actually have a rally as well. We'll pop that, why not? And we'll pop the second wind as well. Because a few of our men are pretty tired. So if we pop that second wind on this unit, yeah, we'll get rid of all of that. And that'll give us a big advantage in the fight. Right Don't think we have any over here, but that's fine. Um, I think our archers as well. You can, like, shoot their missiles. They've got archers over there. Hmm. Where are you guys going? Get back on there. Are you, are you out of ammunition? No, yeah, you are actually... My general's out of ammunition. So let's bring her back. Get another unit in there. And yeah, arrow fire. Just pour into this clump, please. Unfortunately, I don't have any special units to uh, to rally over there. But if we can clear this up, then we can move our entire force over. How are we doing over here? Pretty desperate fighting. They've actually managed to pin me against the wall. So quiet over here as well. We should be able to... Oh, I love how, as well how you have the effects over here as well, above the units. I think that's just a Shogun 2 thing. Shows what's effect them. God, Shogun 2 is just such a great game. I literally can't, like, I can't, like, praise it enough. And imagine Avatar Conquest with this mod as well. If there's actually a community for Avatar... Like, if this mod comes out with a full Lord of the Rings update, you know. Imagine Avatar Conquest. You're moving around as a as an elf or a dwarf, a massing sword. Like, how insane would that be? Like, I think that, like, Avatar Conquest is so cool. But imagine a Lord of the Rings Avatar Conquest on Middle-earth with clans fighting. Like, sorry, that's just, like... That's the game I think everyone wants Creative Assembly to make, you know, let alone this mod. Um, so I think these guys are out of ammunition now, so let's bring them back. We'll replace over uh, another unit in there. As I said, we just really need to break this unit, but these are uh, pretty elite Numenorians, um, so they're going to be kind of hard to break. But again, we do have our better units there as well. Just need to continue to focus in. Um, again, got to, that just adds so much color to the battle. It really does. Um, yeah, and as I said, this is just a reshade. It's just called reshade, and I don't know if you guys can see this, but... They're basically all the settings, so you can just copy my settings. I use this for every Total War. Uh, basically, these settings, maybe a few more. So it's really, really simple to uh, to get working. Just have to Google it, and you can see the effect it you know it gives to these units. It's, uh, it, it does add a lot to the to the game. So we're probably going to get some more men over here. So I might actually deploy. We do have two spare units of spears here. So I'm actually going to probably bring them down. I'm tempted to bring her down as well, but I think she's just fine right now. The arrows coming down. Yeah, they're just doing so much damage. I mean, clump them up, obviously, here. Man, that looks nice. Look at that. With the flag being pushed back. We're driving them into the walls. Don't let them through, boys. And I'll try and get some good close-ups of the shield v. shield combat as well. So the animations are still very much a work in progress. But they've made some really amazing progress as well. I'm sure they're only going to add more and more. You have, like, you know, soldiers fighting bravely. You have, I think, spear and sword, sword and spear, uh, sword be sword and stuff, you know. So there's a, a ton more. And that's, that's the exciting thing as well. Because if they can get animations in for these, then they can do animations for trolls and Mumikil and, you know, wargs. And there's a lot they could do with it. So, again, just really, really impressive stuff. And also, I'm not sure if I mentioned it as well, but they do also have the uh, Battle for Middle Earth music, uh, sound effects as well. You know, soldiers and stuff like that. So that's, again, really cool to have them in the game. I think I'm completely out of ammunition. No, these guys have some shots left. Okay. Well, yeah, continue to shoot that then. Yeah, rotate your fire. That was so cool. That was like Helm's Deep where the elves like switch their fire to the, uh, to the, the causeway. They're basically pushed in now. I think we can get our infantry over here now and just finish this one off. Battle's been going for 10 minutes so far, I think. Yeah, I think we've had 10 minutes. So, again, it's a good length, right, for battles. For a siege battle where I've got the defense, they pushed up, you know, a 10-minute fight on the wall. And, you know, the fight's still going to be going on for a little bit longer as well. That's not a bad, you know, bad, bad battle timer, you know. I think, I think an average battle generally in Total War should last around about 20 minutes if you've got two full stacks. I don't think that's asking too much of the game. And I, I think this mod is doing a great job of it. And obviously, stuff will be tweaked as well when they get the chance to as well, you know, to, to smooth things out. So, uh, nice. We went over here. So, that means we can bring this unit over. And we have a second wind very soon. I might also bring down uh, our queen as well. Get her stuck in. Uh, well, not stuck in, but so I can use her abilities. She has an inspire, a second wind, and a rally, which again is really good. 
Uh, what the hell happened over here? Oh, yeah, we, we won. Nice. So they're basically, yeah, completely pushed in now. Arch oh, some of the cavalry dismounted as well. So some of the Numenorean cavalry. Oh, my God. Look at that armor piece. I think they've glitched out a little bit, but... Man, that looks so good. That's such a nice armor piece. Wow. They look amazing. Really, really good. Let's just throw in armor reinforcements. But yeah, once we get this unit around here and we can second wind. Did I, did I not do that close enough? I'm not sure if I did. I think I got all of these guys. Maybe she'll go that close. Oh, well, that's what she can come in and do. Yeah, we'll get the, the queen up here and we'll, we'll pop off a second wind here. Because in Shogun 2, fatigue makes such a big difference. Um, you know, exhausted units fight really poorly. So if you can get your men to be in fresh using second wind, you just slaughter the enemy. You really do. Um, again, you know, it's, it makes sense, right? Your men are exhausted. They fight really badly. And Shogun 2 in general is just such a good game to, to base that off. So let's get her. We might actually just throw her in as well. Why not? I mean, I really don't want her to die, obviously. But let's charge in. We'll pop our second wind. Yeah, I think that only affects certain units. Okay. We'll drop an Inspire off, I don't know, on this unit in the front. Uh, no need to rally. And then she can get stuck in as well. Because her men are obviously really good. We'll level up a little bit as well. So I don't think tech trees are a thing. It, or not, do, tech trees aren't a thing in this mod. Uh, at the moment, obviously, they will be as it gets more and more developed. Uh, but I was going to say general trees I don't think are unique yet. But I, I think they're obviously going to create custom gem, uh, upgrade trees as well. And I think that's such an important part of a mod is leveling up characters um, and having a, a, an in-depth and exciting upgrade tree. Because, you know, it's so awesome when you, you get attached to characters. You'd be like, oh, that's the character I've spec to be able to do this really cool thing. I've had to not go down certain paths, but he can do this, which is really awesome. And it makes it when characters die uh, really, really impactful and exciting. Um, so... Yeah, hopefully we'll see a lot more of that. But I've, I've crushed them into a corner now. This is just going to be a slaughter. So let's just jump ahead until the battle is over. And then we will, uh, or at least towards the end of the battle. I don't think we need to watch us this slaughter unfold. Just so we can get more of the campaign going. Three, we managed to repel the attackers. Basically just cleaning up their force. They only have 55 men remaining, uh, which is pretty brutal. We only lost 900 as well. Uh, we did take some casualties. But, uh, you know, some of that was the garrison. Some of that was other stuff stuff so uh, there we go and i think we also killed him as well so the pretender at this point is actually dead um surprisingly uh yeah he's actually dead uh which is kind of hilarious we do have some other principalities though fighting we obviously do need to finish conquering his territory as well um but we will obviously look to conquer other people and stuff so don't worry just because we managed to win the battle against our cousin we'll pretend that everyone else is very disloyal um and i'm sure i think there are like in a couple turns they will break trade and non-aggression with me anyway but there will be scripts obviously as the mod gets more and more developed to you know make it so there's a bit more of a story people are picking sides and stuff uh which will be very exciting let's also just drop a save really quickly because uh, obviously we, you know, this mod is still in development, so we don't want any crashes dropping down. Um, so our army-wise, we obviously need to recruit some more men. So let's just pick up some. We do get loads of swordsmen. Yeah. So let's get another swordsman. Uh, maybe some more spears into the force, and then some archers. I think would be a good little pickup. We're still making lots of money, which is good. Yeah. Let's just get some Numenorean city guard. Um, oh wow! So your yeah, recruitment has been uh, completely changed. Maybe just on my first turn, I got to recruit a bunch of stuff. I guess, and then we have that infantry there, and then this here. Okay, good, cool. Well, his city is pretty undefended, but even with my entire army, I don't think I'd be able to take it. Um, I do want to check out. So he does, yeah, he is a pretty good garrison there. I just wanted to check that out and see. Um, in Shogun 2, obviously, you can just move individual armies and stuff. You don't need a leader. Um, a family tree-wise, out of interest, because so this is the tech. Oh, we do actually have tech. Okay, it's just a basic set, though. This is obviously very much a work in progress. Uh, I didn't even realize that was the case. Clan management, do we have um, family? So there's no family, but obviously there will be. So this is another really cool thing about Shogun uh, 2 as well, is that you're going to have all these different council positions as well. I don't think we can see it right now because we just have, uh, you know, the faction leader and this stuff hasn't been added in yet. But you're going to have, you know, your council of war, your council of supply, your council of... Um, 
like construction and building, like city management. And you're going to have these positions you'll put characters in and they'll give certain bonuses as they level up. So again, just another cool thing about Shogun 2. It's kind of the small things, you know, that make Shogun 2 as great as it is. We have a Mithril Mine. Uh, so let's upgrade to uh, another, an improved tavern, I guess. Because we already have a tavern here. Right? Yeah, town in. So let's upgrade the tavern. Uh, we'll upgrade the workshop here. Over here as well. So we've got a little bit more of a defense here. I still want to keep on probably raising up men. Uh, and also probably getting a barracks or an archery range here would be good. Oh, we need this before we can get that archery range. Okay, the Numenorean archers. That's good for me. I guess we'll upgrade the, the Mithril Mine as well because that'll give us a lot of cash. And we have another building slot here as well. We're getting a watchtower. Maybe just a workshop. Or a stable. We've already got a stable here. We'll mainly like recruit this. Like, how epic would it be um, as well if they could get population into this mod? Oh, that'd be so good. Also, nice. Um... Nice, our faction leader got the Mirror of Amaterasu. Amaterasu, I think, means sun in, in Japanese. Also, obviously, Sasuke, uh, or the Uchiha master move, attaches and uh, Sasuke's uh, burning black flame. Uh, but cool, I'll take that nonetheless. Um, you yeah, know, it's very cool indeed. I awaken my Mangekio Sharingan after killing my cousin. I mean, that works, right? Awakening my Mangekio Sharingan after killing my cousin right there in that battle. Yes. Indeed, I have fallen into darkness, my brothers. Um, but cool, so I guess we're just going to end the turn again. Build up our forces a little bit more. Diplomacy, yeah, we're still just at war. We've got, we're allied with everyone. As I said, I think they break the alliance in a turn or two. At least they did in my test run as the other character. Maybe we'll have to break the alliance uh, with them. But as I said, I don't care. I'm, I'm conquering as much as possible. So again, this army is looking good. We could muster up another turn. And I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. Oh, nice. And I think our stable has been built now. No. St uh, yeah, our stable has been built. Where is it? Here. So the stable has been built. But we can't recruit any horse because we need uh, required resource not met. So we don't actually have the resources. Okay, that's fun. That's interesting. Um, so what resource do we need then? Able's a replenishment. So I guess we need like some sort of horse. It's annoying there's no like wicked, like there's no like right click in Rome 2 where you can just check it out. But yeah, I guess we'll need the horse. Uh, you will need horses uh, to, get, to get horses. I guess that makes sense, right? Uh, a staple supply of war horses. So we'll have to go on the lookout for them. See if we can find them. They'll just kind of be like this, like our mithril mines. But for now, we'll focus on infantry then, I guess. Uh, we're getting some good bowmen in. We can get some Numenorean shock infantry or just some sword militia. Again, we have lots of money, so I'm not really not really nervous about that. We'll get some shock infantry for the flanks. Oh, we get a lot of them. Okay, that's perfect, yeah. So that'll probably round out our army, and then we'll march on the city, and we'll set them under siege. Are there any more upgrades I want? Uh, I don't know as of yet if there is anything big that I would like. Yeah, it's so difficult to see what the next, like, proper building is in the chain with the way this is set up. Um, so hopefully they can find a way around that um, in the mod. Because, yeah, I don't really know what to upgrade my buildings to. Woo! Allies declare war on ally. So, I don't know who this is. I really, really wish Total War would allow you to zoom out and see who this is. Because I don't know who the fuck the Principality of Anduin is. But I guess I'll break the alliance just because I don't know. Oh, it's these guys. So these guys are declaring war on these guys. Okay, so at least I know who this is. So this is the black guy. They're all the way over there. I don't really care for them. Um, because they're a lot further away. I'd much prefer to keep these guys in the center happy. So let's decline and break the alliance. Uh, we'll see who they, uh, they do up. So yeah, we broke our alliance. A lot of alliances were broken. Okay, this is what I'm saying. Like, everything starts to kick off now. Our uh, civil bureaucracy has now been built. Perfect. Um, so that's this one. Yeah, that's this one giving us an extra bit of a garrison Yeah, so look at this. That's how that works, right? So I can only upgrade into that now So that's kind of what I want for all of this. I guess that's probably just a UI work in progress thing um, But that's cool. It's cool to see that it does work for some buildings. It's obviously these just haven't been tweaked yet um, Yeah, it makes that's a lot. That's, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you just have to destroy it. Okay That's good. That's good. Good to see. It's really good to see actually. So it's a Masar army, no cavalry. She will lead the forces forward. Um, they have a small force outside, and I guess we'll engage it, right? They're not going inside the city, which is fine. Oh, there's also boats as well, navies. Um, um, they do have Numenorean ships as well, so 
That's, again, another thing that modern Total Wars don't have, naval battles. And Jogan 2 naval battles are actually really good as well, so... Um, yeah, that's awesome, obviously. They were, I think Shogun 2 was the first time they did it, and it was definitely the peak. And they're going to retreat inside the city. That's really interesting that you actually retreat inside the city. That's actually really cool. Because um, normally they just, like, run you away, but it's great to see that they actually push you inside the city. We will just continue the siege. I want to try and starve them out for a little bit, maybe try and force them to sally out, because you guys saw how brutal sieges were just a second ago. And we don't want to, uh, yeah, have that wrath on us. I will put a small garrison inside our main capital to keep that around. Um, everywhere else, though, can, again, just recruit a couple more units. We want to have, I mean, garrisons seem pretty big in this mob, but even still, it'd be a good idea to have it. Maybe get some volunteer spearmen over here as well, just to help keep the garrison. So who are we still allied with? We're still allied with, oh, it didn't break our alliance with these guys. Or did it? I mean, no one likes us, so it broke our alliance with these guys. Oh, I okay, so I messed up. I okay, yeah, I messed up. I broke the alliance because I didn't back this guy up. It wasn't asking me if I wanted to back up this guy, it was asking me whether or not I wanted to back up this guy, the defender of the war. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Let's go back to our city before we get lost in Middle Earth. <laughs> It'd be so cool if you could zoom like just all the way out and see everything. I also love that as well. Numenor. Man. God, I'm just... I'm, I'm having a bloody blast, guys. And hopefully you guys are as well. Uh, because, I mean, this is... This mod is going to be something else. For sure. And they are going to sally out, which is exactly what we wanted them to do. Let's save it in case we crash or anything. Because, again, you know, work in progress. They have a pretty good army. This will be the taste of our first field battle now. They are the aggressors, so we can take the defense as well. I imagine Shogun 2 as well, uh, or the mod will get an update when it comes to battle maps as well. I'm assuming, you know, we're not going to be fighting on the grassy plains of uh, Japan every single battle. You know, they're going to add in your know, rocky wastelands like Mordor. Um, you know, and a whole different, like, type of different battles. Obviously, you have river crossings. I mean, you have fort battles in Shogun 2, but you have river crossings and other stuff like that. So there's still plenty of opportunities to have some unique stuff. But again, you know, these map modding stuff takes time because you have to you have to make all the individual 3D models. And it might not sound like a lot, but you have to make like individual textures for the ground, rocks, different trees. You know, maybe for like a little outpost somewhere, you're going to have like weaponry that's used in these units, different barrels, you know, uh, roads going through places, cities in the background, which all have to look different. So it definitely adds up. Um, yeah, it really, really does. Um, so let's just let's just take this hill, I guess. We'll take the hill and we'll just let them come at us. So we'll have our front line of our swordsmen. Just pretty basic in the swords. We'll have our... Are these shock, yeah, these are shock infantry. I have a big clump of shock infantry on my left flank. We'll have our elite spearmen kind of sitting a bit further back in the center so they can reinforce. I'll put some more spearmen on my right flank. And then I'll have all my archers. Plus my general because she is also an archer. Um, and we'll just stick them like so. Seems like a pretty good setup to me. And look at that range on some of these archers. The elite archers can just start firing away so goddamn quickly. Um, it seems to have gone pretty heavy on this right flank, so let's advance out our flank a little bit like that. Let's get into a shield wall as quickly as possible. Form a wall. I mean, it's probably not a bad idea to advance just a tad. So we're a little bit on the crest of a hill. So let's do that. Let's just get a little bit further forward. This is the shuffle animation as well, which is actually really cool. Like when we're in shield wall, they just kind of like shuffle forward. Oh, man. What a great looking game. Because even this game was like nine years old. Show yourselves. It's pretty fucking epic. And some of our archers are already volleying out there. We are in the trees as well. I mean, oh my god. They're just advancing forward as well. Oh my god, that looks so good. If you guys don't get this video to 500 likes, I am going to be mad. Fire arrows coming in, but we will be returning fire. 
Unfortunately, we can't, uh, we can't obviously go get these missiles or anything because we don't have uh, a range reel, really. What we can do is we'll get, get our archers, obviously, just to pick away at theirs. And our general as well is here. Uh, she can start shooting a large. So we'll focus down the missiles, mainly. You guys can't. You guys just shoot whatever you want. Oh, yeah, I can also deploy spikes as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, the AI is about to clash against my wall, though. Shields, hold! Hold the line! Here we go. Yeah, combat going off there. Archers in, in the background. But we can start to outflank this now. Very easily, I think. Jeremy's probably taking a bit of missile fire, but I'm sure she'll be fine. Unless he doesn't, like, get an arrow to the eye, we'll be fine. Um, oh, God. Yeah, they're coming. They're pretty heavy here. So let's try and push through. We obviously have our elite spearmen back here. Their archers are getting smashed by mine, so I shouldn't have to worry about their missiles. Also, check that out. We actually have a guard mode in this game. Who would have thought it? We'll throw in our shock infantry. These guys are just, like, wielding swords looking to get stuck in and flank as quickly as possible. So let's move around this flank. We'll obviously look to envelop that. And I, we could maybe send a unit after their archers, try and bring these guys down. Yeah, look, there's obviously a, a bug with the arrow coming in. They're like, they're like see-through. Maybe that's me, though. Because if, if they get blocked by the uh, the unit, I can just, like, they, like, they, like, go through the unit. Maybe that's, like, a, a thing I have on, though. So maybe it's not even anything to do with the mod. But let's start to move around with these guys. Uh, these guys also have rapid advance, which is really useful. So you can actually get around very quickly. And they have a war cry. Oh, wow, they have a war shout? That's so useful. I guess they are shock infantry. It makes a lot of sense. Let's just go in. The rapid advance will come flying into the back of this shield wall. Pop our war cry as well. And, and hit them hard. Um... And you've got more infantry coming in there, completely surrounding this section. Our archers are doing a great job at scaring off their missiles. If we don't really need this, yeah, screw that. Uh, our archers will kill everything else. Yeah, just guys, you go shoot that. And we're breaking them. With that war cry, we're coming in very quickly. Um, and again, like, battles are lasting, you know. Against an actual player with these armies, I think you'd have, like, the perfect length of battles, realistically. You know, like, I wouldn't be able to outflank them and pop these war cries and stuff. Something that would be amazing, and I don't know if it's like ever possible in like a, uh, in a game, is tying abilities to the rank of experience a unit has. So if they get to golden, like a golden chevron, obviously at the moment we have bronze chevrons on our units, but if they get to gold, they then unlock like a war cry, like a unit upgrade almost. Or maybe it's like if you could tie it to like the Mithril weapons or something, that'd be really cool and interesting. But I don't know if that's even possible. <laughs> you know, that's just like, that's just me like talking out loud. Obviously, you know, it's fine the way it is in the mod. It's, you know, it works really well. Nice little cool shield animation there. Very cool indeed. And it looks like I've like completely wrapped this flank now. Um, their archers are completely broken. And I think these guys are out of ammunition now. Yeah, they are. So... My longbows can really start to pick away. Uh, I probably will pop a... I don't even need to pop a second wind at all. I was just thinking maybe I need to pop a second wind, but yeah, I don't. All my men are pretty well. On this flank I do, but I don't think I have anything over here that can. So maybe let's, uh, let's form into marching column and we'll get over to this flank so we can replenish our soldiers there. The shock infantry kind of need to. Everyone else is fine. So we're going to be in marching column and let's go over there, boys. Oh my god. Like so good. The way the, the sun just gleams off the shields as well. So yeah, let's make our way around. Um, and just help to envelop. And these are archers here as well. She shouldn't really be an issue. We have some archers here as well. Archers can maybe shoot like into the back of these guys. That'd be pretty good. And as soon as we're over, we're almost over here as well. Might as well run as well, because we're going to pop second wind right, so it doesn't really matter. I just want to get, like, here. We can even charge in as well. just want to, like, basically freshen up a large portion of this flank. There's three units here, which are kind of exhausted. It seems like it only applies to, like, one or two units. Um, either way, that's fine. Let's have, like, an Inspire on this unit. Pop a Rally, because a few of our units are, like, lowering their morale. 
And then we'll charge her in. Why not? She is the battle queen of Numenor. And she will make them pay. Epic, man. Swordsman can just come around and clear up the battle. Um, and yeah, we're just like kind of closing them off now. I don't know where about their general is. Oh, do we, no. These guys have stands for hold firm, though, which I think applies to... So I think it makes them unbreakable, which is actually really useful. Uh, the unit greatly increases defensive ability and stops morale drops. So yeah, it makes them in, uh, unbreakable for a set amount of time and goes from there. Probably the war cry there and just envelop them. Archers are cleaning that up. Yeah, it's annoying because I feel like if we had cavalry, we'd be able to wrap these battles up very quickly uh, because you would just be able to... Uh, yeah, hammer and anvil, rear charge them enough to, to end up breaking them, but we don't really have that um, at the moment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a, a nice little tight formation here with these guys and just push them through this gap we've made. There's like a small unit of like one dude there. But yeah, let's just like push them through this gap to help out over here and then probably envelop there as well. Actually, no, you guys go there. And then just, yeah, get stuck in there. Go and rear charge them. Obviously, these are like elite units as well. We're not just, it's not like we're just fighting uh, militia. We are fighting elite heavy infantry. So that's why things are lasting the way they are. Crush the enemy. I love the Battle for Middle Earth sounds as well. And let's literally crush the enemy. This 1v1 was going on. It's not a 1v1 no more. They stand alone no longer. Oh, our general's actually taking a bit of a pounding. Okay, let's fall back. I don't want her to obviously die. Let's just fall back with her. We can quite easily throw some more infantry in to cover her retreat. I think that's going to basically be the battle. The archers are still racking up loads of kills on these guys. We've got some more men who have come around to help envelop. Where are Because our shock infantry have that war cry ability, which is so useful. And yeah, we've broken that. So now we can come into the back of these guys and probably break them all. And that'll probably be battle, I would assume. Um, yeah, so that's that one. And then we have... That's all right. We only have three. Oh, we only have three units of shock infantry. That's fine. So we'll get you stuck in there. And then probably you just move around there. Yeah, with cavalry, this would be much better. But, like, again, look at that. You know, like a, a decently side long length battle. You know, it don't feel like it went on for that much longer than it needed to. It, you know, units do move quite fast. I wouldn't mind maybe movement speed turning toned down just a little bit. Because um, then that would, like, emphasize a lot more strategy and placement of units. But even still, like, I don't think that's really a, a big deal, you know? You know, obviously, that, that's just all, it all just depends on the, the vision the modder has, you know, for the for the mod itself. And look at that, you know, army attrition's coming in, and then they just break, you know? So it's perfect. Literally, that's like, that was a, that was a really good length, you know? It was still a 10-minute battle, but I felt like it, it lasted just, you know, really well. Um, and it, again, like, imagine doing this battle... But it's a drop-in battle, and you guys play against, like, uh, that's just so cool, you know, for these battles. You get rid of the worst part of this game, which is, you know, the AI. Let's jump back onto the campaign map. This should allow us to take the city now, uh, when it's our turn again, which is great. We'll be able to drive that advantage home, hopefully. And, yeah, eliminate, you know, the opposing faction, and then it's just conquering, you know, different principalities of Numenor. I mean, we, we've defeated our brother, obviously. Or our cousin, sorry. A uh, pretty clean victory as well. We only we lost 1,100. So we lost half their men. Which, again, I think is a pretty good balance, right? You lose half your men um, in a battle you win. And we take the town. We could, Oh, my God. We could sack it for 37, 35 grand. We don't need the money. And, again, another battle. Oh, wow. Um, so their gang. So this is a person who attacked the other person. And now they're ganging up. Again, I'm probably just going to... I don't want to I don't want to fight everyone, so we're going to decline. Numenor is in ruin, and we're going to have to be the ones to unite it. Um, so we did level up as well. And as I said, I don't think there is a upgrade tree. I'll probably save it first as well, just to make sure that we don't run into any issues. Because it would suck to have to fight a battle. So as I said, I don't think there's any special retainers in here. Um, and the skill tree, I think, is... Maybe this is custom, because these are all new, obviously. Um, I'm not sure. I think they're generally the same. Yeah, I think I think they're basically the same. Um, yeah, they, they these have they the pictures have been changed though. It looks really really cool. They look really cool. 
Uh, oh yeah, we want the campaign movement range health, but bloody yeah, we want that. Um, but yeah, the pitch has been changed. I'm sure this will be, you know, added to like, you know, to have special things. You know, you want orc commanders who are maybe really good with trolls. Maybe, you know, ones who boost your crappy units. Like, there'll be a bunch of stuff which will be, you know, added into them. And I think that's like a really, like, it doesn't seem like it, but I personally... Oh, we can get boats as well. Yeah, look at that. You can get the two types of boats as well, which we might be what we'll have to go and do. But as I said, like, I don't think that, you know... This sounds like it's important, you know, it's, oh, it's just an upgrade tree. But I think it's such a great way to tie your attention to characters um, and get really attached to them and care if they die and care if they live. So hopefully we'll see this uh, this done up. But yeah, there we go. A pretty, pretty good first episode. I think that's where we're going to uh, end this one. Uh, I'm going to record another one today. So if we hit that thousand like target, we will have another episode up tomorrow. So if you guys want to see that, obviously drop a like down below. If we hit a thousand, then you'll have another one for Sunday, um, which, you know, is pretty, going to be pretty awesome because we're going to obviously decide to declare war on someone else. Uh, I'm not sure who, maybe give me some advice down below in the comments who you think we should go after uh, in this. Obviously, you can see everyone set up around us. Uh, if there's someone in particular you think I should kill, then just let me know. I guess probably just like securing a flank up here would be good. Um, or I guess probably declaring war on the guy we broke our alliance with. Yeah, these guys. Because we broke our alliance with them. Um, they only have one ally, so they're allied with the... Oh, that would be a hard war though. We'd be fighting on two flanks. Yeah, that'd be dangerous. And I don't think we can get another general. <laughs> I don't think more generals have been added into the mod yet, which is kind of funny. Uh, this is a dry dock and an inn. Okay. So, yeah, it just has everything else, which is normal. Okay, that's perfect. Okay. Well, that's good. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this. If you did, be sure to drop a like and a comment down below. Make sure you go ahead and check out the mod. Make sure you check them out on Patreon. And I'll see you guys in the next one.